So would the approach of the 2023 presidential tussle, the different interest groups and internecine fighters within the PDP are starting to do their post-mortems or when on where things might have gone awry for the party. There is, of course, the lingering Nyetsomwike crisis, which has remained unresolved and which could hurt the PDP's electoral chances. But even before that fiasco, there was another equally strained, edgy and nettlesome one, which helped to deepen suspicion within the party. The issue of a presidential candidate of southeastern extraction. It was an issue that took centre stage with a lot of bluster from leading Igbo politicians who suggested that unless the ticket was zoned to the southeast, the PDP could lose their support. Well, the PDP called their bluff, and apart from P. Toby, none of the leading Igbo politicians walked away from the PDP. In fact, far from it, many of them have pledged their support for the candidate Atiku Abubakar and are actively campaigning for him. So what impact is all that likely to have on the political fortunes of the PDP going into 2023? Well, one of those Igbo politicians who threatened fire and brimstone unless the presidential ticket went to the southeast was the former PDP chairman and former governor of Enugu State, Dr. Kweselia Zenwodo, and he joins me now in the studio. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you, Charles. Good How evening. nice to see you again. Thank you very much. It's been a while. Uh, thanks for inviting me back. And I know you've been very busy um, with negotiations um, within the PDP, so let's start with that. A cocktail of internal pressures still facing the PDP, notably the Nyesamwike crisis. But the PDP, in the face of that, let me call it bad bet, still proceeding with its campaign, how much has that weakened the PDP as it heads into 2023? Well, let me say that initially, it's true uh, words in the spanner of the party's campaign. In fact, that embryo delayed our takeoff for almost three months while we we're trying to resolve the, the crisis. Um, but we discovered that whether we resolve it or not, we have to go to the election. And uh, the election dates have been fixed and they will hold. So we have to move on while still uh, maintaining the doors open for peaceful resolution of uh, the, uh, the matter. So um, I would say that, uh, yes, in the beginning, it looked as if it was going to hurt so bad. But now looking at it today, I don't think it's that bad because I, be, I, I think that the nation is becoming tired of the way that uh, Governor Wicke and uh, those who are with him are going about this. Uh, they're throwing a lot of mud on people and on the party. And uh, you begin to ask yourself, most of them are contesting election in PDP. Most of them have sponsored candidates in their states to run election in PDP. If they destroy the party, how will they win their elections? And what will be the faith of uh, their candidates and the faith of the party and the nation? We think that rescue Nigeria is the big picture which we must all face. Every other thing must be subjected to its proper place. What has happened in Nigeria in the past seven years leaves so much to be desired. And we believe that the stewardship of PDP uh, in the first 16 years of the Fourth Republic uh, cannot in any way be compared with what is happening to us right now. Right. And that's why we think that we have the capacity, we have the men and women who have uh, shown uh, competence in the management of our national affairs and that we can rescue the, part, the country back to what it was in 2015 uh, and that's what we're determined to do right now and that's why we're pushing on with the campaigns we're pushing on with um, uh, all the strategies we have laid out 
to win the election. Right. But, but would you say that the Wike problem has made it more difficult for the PDP to win the 2023 election? Uh, certainly, they have drawn us back. If we were uh, on the same page with five of our governors, we would be moving faster. But uh, the truth of the matter is that I believe the confidence of the people of Nigeria that the only party that is positioned to rescue the country is PDP, who will still be victorious at the polls. But you, you've been part of the PDP reconciliation team. Um, that's, that's the team that's been negotiating with Governor Wike. I don't know how far um, those negotiations went and whether they're still going on, whether you've completely now given up. But it seems like the team has plowed great energy into those negotiations, but so far apparently to no great return. Is that an accurate assessment? Is there still a chance of mending that relationship? I think that there is, there's a lot of success that has been achieved uh, because our team from the Board of Trustees... Well, success means that he's back in the team and he clearly is not. No, I, I'm not saying that we achieve complete success. I right. said there is a measure of success uh, in the intervention, robust intervention because we reached out to each and every governor that uh, is on the side of Wiki. And we spent at least one full day in the state uh, and uh, had a lot of time to discuss why and solutions. And uh, we came out with uh, robust ideas on how we can resolve the issues. And we made our recommendations to the entire Board of Trustees and after considering our resolutions, um, our recommendations, they came out with a resolution which they addressed the press with. And what has come out of that is that people see the entire thing in its complete reality, uh, rather than seeing it from John D's point of view. That has uh, brought a situation where more people are robust in going forward with the election and um, still uh, not abandoning. Right. Uh, so basically, you haven't there. resolved the, yes. the problem. Yeah. Well, let's move away from Nyesam Wike and talk about the other uh, movement that you tried as a respected politician to spearhead, which is the idea of a Nigerian president of Igbo extraction. You set your sights on the PDP to bring the presidency to the southeast. You warned at the time in 2020, I remember you were on my program, Arise News, um, you warned that if the Southeast doesn't get the presidency in, in 2023, the Igbo politicians would join the activists and the radicals in demanding a Biafran Republic. What's your assessment of where things stand with regard to that position that you held so fervently in 2020? Let me say that uh I and uh, a number of uh, my colleagues from the Southeast, um, we demanded robustly and with great justice that the presidency should be shown to the Southeast. And we gave so many reasons based on our constitution that uh, uh, encourages us to rotate and zone offices, uh, based on the contributions of the Southeast to the PDP since uh, its formation in 1998. And uh, we felt we had paid our dues. And this time, if the presidency was coming to the South, uh, it should naturally go to Southeast. Since the South South had been vice president for, for three years and president for five years, and the Southwest had been president for eight years. Um, of course, uh, at that time, other zones were making their demands. For example, where the candidate finally came from, the Northeast. They said since the offer of Balewa, they have not been. And since the current republic, they have not been president. But then in the South, we had had Obasanjo for eight years, and we had had Jonathan for six years, and they had had only uh, three years of uh, Yaradua. And therefore, that the party owed, owed to them to come back to the North and to go to the Northeast. Yeah, but you had that in 2019. 2019. I mean, you, you had the, the presidency mm -hmm. went to the north in 2019. That's what I'm saying. Yaradua yeah. was there for three years. No, no, I'm talking about the, the 
2019, which preceded 2023. In terms of zoning? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it of, went of to the course, north. Because zoned to the north so, at, that, at that time. Right. Yeah, and I, I, I took her back also contested, but we lost. Now, uh, in the north central, they said everybody had been, uh, they had, had a lot of uh, presidents, but they were all military. They are entitled to have a, a shot at the civilian presidency. Uh, and, and so this went every up and down, each zone trying to make a case for itself. At the end of the day, the party, in its wisdom and in its tradition, uh, set up a committee to say where should the party offices be zoned. And they came up with the right decision that the executive that was there was coming to the end of its four-year tenure. And therefore, all those who are in the south, all those offices should go to the north, and the offices in the north should go to the south. That's how we elected Ayu as our president, uh, as the chairman of the party from the north, because Secundus was leaving from the south. Now, having done that, when it came to the time to zone the presidency, another committee was set up. The first committee was chairman by my state governor, if I'm going. And the second committee was headed by uh, Tom, um, uh, Governor Otum. And um, uh, in their wisdom, they felt, one, that the zoning was coming too late. Because at that time, everybody who wanted to run for the presidency in our party had procured forms and was uh, preparing for the primary election. And uh, unlike uh, in 2015, um, uh, before 2019, we did, four years before that, we had decided that the presidency should go to the north, and nobody from the south contested. So the, the scenario this time, we were not doing it early enough, and people had, uh, had bought their forms and they were already in the field. Two, they felt that from the point of weakness, based on past experience, that we may be boxing ourselves into a corner if we zoned, and therefore, the right thing is to treat it open so that the best candidate will emerge to fight the, uh, the government in power. So all of that went on and, and, and on. But the truth of the matter is that we eventually had a, a primary which was thrown open and people from the north and the south went in for it and did their best. And at the end of the day, we had a candidate. So we put the primary election behind us. We are looking forward right. to making sure that that candidate becomes the next president of Nigeria. So basically, all your arguments about justice and, and all the rest of them um, fell on deaf ears. And I mean, that, that's really the, the picture, isn't it? I mean, it, you, you didn't achieve what you set out to achieve. And many people saw it as a betrayal by the PDP, given what the Southeast had contributed to the party and in the interest of justice. And people like P. Toby walked out of the party. Um, but you and, and a whole slew of other senior Igbo politicians remained in the PP, PDP, not only stayed on, but are actually actively campaigning for Atiku Abubakar. Do, do you not feel that that was, to some extent, a betrayal of, of, the, of that same cause that you so vociferously defended in, in 2020? Let's, let's look at it this way, Charlie. Now, first of all, we participated in all the processes that led to the emergence of a candidate. And having subjected ourselves to, the, to it and we lost out, is not a reason to leave the party. Okay? If we had abandoned it and said to hell, well, whatever came out of it, we would have said we are not part of it. But it's about principle, I'm though, coming. isn't it? I'm coming. Now, having said that, I personally, I personally, I went into shock and depression after the primaries. Why? In terms of, in, in terms of all the energy mm. and everything that God gave to me that I could muster to convince my party to zone the thing to the southeast, not only fell on deaf ears, but the way it fell, I went into depression. Why? We had 95 delegates from the southeast that went for that election. 
and we had two people from the Southeast standing at the end. And that was uh, um, former Secretary of Government and former Senate President, Anyim. He got 14 votes. And Sam Obama got one vote. 15 out of 95 delegates from the Southeast. Did it mean that I was not convincing enough or I was telling lies and that the justice and fairness and equity I was talking did not even resonate with my own people? Nobody from outside the Southeast voted for a candidate in the Southeast. Not even from the South South. Not even from the Southwest. We are clamoring from South Southern mm. presidency. But none of them found it suspicious enough. Not even our own people. But you could have joined I'm Peter B and walking I'm away, coming. couldn't you? Number two, even in the APC, mm. my friend and colleague, Obonionu, I say colleague because we are governors at the same time, did so much in the formation of APC. And he appealed for justice, justice, justice on the voting ground. The party visited him with injustice. He got one vote. The other candidates from the, from, uh, from the south, from his state, the government of uh, a boy in state, got that something votes. Namani, former Senate president, zero. The same thing with um, uh, Richard Sokoracha and others. So, out of 300 and something delegates from the southeast, we only got 30 something votes. And nobody from Nigeria thought that anybody from South East was good enough to be president. I went into depression. What country, what type of country is this? Yeah, but it's not the country, though. It's the parties, yeah, isn't the, it? Yeah, the party is, is, is representing the interests mm. of the people. But you can the see the reaction the that air. Peter B is getting I'm now. Coming. So, so it must be that they, the, 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 part, it's, the problem is with the parties, I'm isn't it? I'm coming. I'm coming. What... What reaction Peter is getting, especially from the South East and South South, is refreshing for our people. They feel that at, at least they're drawing attention to that justice, fairness, and equity they're demanding. But my, my fear is that there is no permutation in Nigeria by which a zone can become president of Nigeria by itself. Therefore, I had to go to interception. I had to look at the bigger picture. And I saw the golden days of democracy in Nigeria were in the first and second republics. That time, the North did not make any pretenses of having a national party. They had Northern People's Congress. And Zeke in the East had NCNC. And it was an alignment between those that could form the federal government. That's how Zeke became president mm -hmm. and Tafari Balewa prime minister. In the Second Republic, the same thing. NPN, which was predominantly North, could not form a government and had to align with NPP in the East. And that's how Ekweme became vice president and from MPP, somebody from the South East also became the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Ume Zuke. Now, today we have a Northwest Alliance. I don't know whether the West is sleeping peacefully in the bed with that alliance. And I don't know where Nigeria has found itself. So it becomes very important that those of us in the East must seek that partnership again with the North. And I feel that that is the surest way that an Easterner can become president of Nigeria. But you are, of course, presuming that things are going to be the way that they were. And you have a, an almost revolutionary movement saying that things can no longer be the way they were. And that, that those the alliances that you're talking about have now been broken apart by a new surge 
in youthful political exuberance. You are, of course, seen by money as something of a statesman. You were a former governor of Enugu State. You were a former chairman of the PDP. Your family, going back to your father, have been well respected on the political scene, including your brother, Niamwodo. In that regard, how do you see the political landscape going into 2023? What's your sense of how it's all likely to pan out as the presidential candidates spar amongst themselves all the way to the ballot box? And I'm talking about the front runners, Atiku, Tinubu, Pito B, and Kwankwaso. Well, again, I feel very bad for southern Nigeria because the, the um, suspicion that the south and the east have for each other makes political alliance between the east and the west very difficult. We saw it in this. Our friend... Um, uh, from Port Harcourt, he was interested in being president. If it was fair and just, he'll be talking about Southeast president, as Edwin Clark was preaching. In the West, the West PDP should have been interested in Southeast president, as Ayo Adebanjo was preaching, but it didn't happen. And now you have two strong candidates from the South, Tinubu and uh, uh, Peter Obi, and they are going to get majority of their support, whether we like it or not, from their traditional basis. That is yet to change. The dynamics we are talking about, we are looking forward to seeing it. And how I wish it to play out in favor of Peter Obi. <laughs> but having said so, in the North, don't be surprised before you cast the vote. The North will get Kwan Kwasu to team up with Atiku. And they will vote the way they normally vote. And the South will be divided. That is what the results are going to get from that election. Well, that's a very interesting analysis. And on that note, it's always fascinating talking with you. Um, and thank you very much indeed, because I know it's been difficult for you to find the time to come in. And of course, uh, Dr. Okwesilieze Mwozudo is a former governor of Enugu State, former PDP chairman. Thank you very much indeed. That's my pleasure talking with you anytime.